They said the Fed was going to start cutting rates and the interest rates, they were going to plummet, but they hadn't. So how can you secure the lowest interest rate possible when buying a new house? We are going over the five ways that could help you secure that lower interest rate. Now, there are some negatives to these strategies, which we're going to go over. This is some of the worst affordability that we have seen in the last 40 years. But for many buyers waiting for mortgage rates to go down, it's not an option. Not to mention owning a home, even at a higher interest rate, still beats renting all day and every day of the week. Real quick, my name is Jeff Chubb, and I'm a retired investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I'm here to help. Buying discount points is the first option to get a lower mortgage rate. 45% or nearly half of conventional home buyers in 2022 actually purchased discount points to lower their interest rate. Prepaying interest to lower a mortgage rate generally gains popularity in times of higher interest rates. This process is called buying discount points. Buying one point is equal to 1% of the loan amount and it will generally reduce your rate by about a quarter of a percentage point. You heard that right. It's 1% of the loan amount. So it's very costly. In other words, if you were going to get a $500,000 mortgage, then the point would cost you $5,000 in additional closing costs. The negative of this is that it's expensive and the break even, it's generally gonna take five to seven years. So you need to be in the house for quite some time in order to pay this off. And the risk is that the interest rates drop enough to make sense for you to refinance. If you refinance, then those discount points you paid for, they'd be for nothing. An interest rate buy-down is another great option to get a lower rate, at least for the first few years of the home loan. Home builders, sellers, and some lenders sometimes offer these as incentives to buyers in order to boost sales. I've seen up to three-year buy-downs, but there are also two years as well as one-year buy-downs. Let's say you do a three-year buy-down, and the current interest rate is 8%. The interest rate for the first year is going to be 5%, the second year 6%, and then the third year, 7%. And then on the fourth year, and for the rest of the loan, it's going to be 8%. Like buying points, it's essentially paying upfront interest. It costs less because the buy down, it's not permanent. The negatives are that you are still pre qualified on that higher 8% interest rate in that case, and that it's not permanent, the buy down of the rate that is. It's a great strategy if you feel that interest rates are going to go down in the future or you're expecting an increase in income then it's fantastic and it might be a great idea. Adjustable rate mortgages, or better known as ARMS, are another way to secure a lower interest rate. Now, the popularity of these types of loans begin to rise as interest rates increase as well. ARMS work by having an introductory period in the beginning and then adjusting to the market-based rate after. Often, the fixed rate period is 5 to 10 years. So when you hear someone say a 5-1 ARM, then that means the first five years is fixed with the last 25 years being a floating rate based on the market. A 7-1 arm is a seven-year fix with a 23-year floating rate. Now, the positives of this loan type is that the introductory rate is generally lower than a fixed rate mortgage. The negatives is that after the fixed rate, the interest rate, it, well, could go up. It all depends on what's happening in the marketplace. Now, the interest rate will adjust once per year for most loans. There are limits to how much the rate can increase in order to minimize what's called rate shock. Most loans also have maxes that the interest rate can actually adjust up to. So if you use an arm, then make sure you have thought through all of the angles. As an example, I always tell people that if you're planning on staying in a house for five years, then well, maybe do a 7-1 arm to make sure that you just buy yourself a little time. Just in case, because well, life happens, right? Now, if you plan to refinance, then remember that you're going to have to reapply for that loan in order to do so. There will be extra costs with that, but also there are risks as well, like maybe losing your job or a situation where your credit was negatively affected, which could hinder your ability to actually be able to refinance in the future. A shorter term mortgage is another way of getting a lower rate. 15 or 20 year fixed rate mortgages typically come with lower interest rates. The shorter term also means, well, that you pay a lot less interest over time. Now, the negative is that your payment, it's going to be higher. Let's do some math. 
Let's say you can get a 30 year mortgage at a 7.1% on a $500,000 loan. Then that means your monthly principal and interest payment is $3,360. Compare that to $3,728 principal and interest payment on the 20 year fixed rate at 6.5%. This is where it gets really insane. Really insane. The interest paid over the life of the 30 year fixed loan is $709,658. Dollars compared to the $394,688 over the 20-year loan. Yes, the negative is a higher loan payment, but you save a ton of money in interest. Now, an assumable rate mortgage is the last option for a buyer to get a lower rate, but this one is a lot harder than it sounds. An assumable rate mortgage allows a home buyer to take over the remaining payments of an existing home loan. Now, I know how amazing this sounds, but most conventional mortgages are not eligible. This means that you'd need to find a seller with an FHA loan, VA, USDA loan. Now, the real negative to this is that it generally means that you need to make a lump sum payment to the current owner to cover the value of any equity for their profit. So as an example, let's say that house was worth $500,000 and there was a $300,000 loan on it, and maybe a really attractive rate of 3%. This means that the buyer would need to bring $200,000 in cash as a lump sum payment because he can't finance this. Owning a home is, well, it should be a long-term commitment. Remember that mortgage rates, they're cyclical. In other words, just because mortgage rates are currently at multi-decade highs doesn't mean a refinancing opportunity won't easily present itself some years down the road. You will need interest rates to dip more than at least 1% in order to make the refinancing worth it. And remember that there will be refinancing closing costs, which generally it can be rolled into the new loan. My name's Jeff Chuck, and I appreciate you keeping me in mind should you be thinking about buying or selling a house. Go online at youtuberealestateagent.com or you can find all of my contact information in the description below right down there. Until next time.